Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of AI News, Drama and Updates. We are in the final Friday of April here. And of course, as always, we have a ton to cover in the AI space. But for our first topic subject today, I wanted to cover the future. And I want to give you a quick preview of what the future may be like for you if you are maybe uh, socially awkward or maybe need help during a job interview, something like that. This article covers a prototype piece of hardware that somebody put together that uses ChatGPT and integrates it with a monocle hidden behind some sunglasses. So you get a little bit of a preview of what that experience looks like here. Hey, Brian, um, it's not hey, not hey, awkward. How's your trip to Argentina? I'd it love was, to hear about it. Oh, it was so fun. I had a blast. We explored around the city and went to museums and did a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> now you can see here there was a little bit of a fast forward, but even with that, there's too much of a delay for this to be viable. But you can see where the technology is going. You can get an idea of at least what he's going for. As we see the API for ChatGPT become more accessible, as well as a lot of other LLM stuff, we're probably going to see a lot more stuff similar to this or building off of different concepts related to this. Now, of course, this is goofy and awkward, but this is also a prototype, and this isn't really meant for production or the real world. In fact, as we see this and we think about our own future, this may even lead into future videos and topics where I can see this as being a potential concern where we're letting GPT do a lot of thinking for us. Critical thinking and problem solving is part of what makes us human. And so the more that we lean on that crutch, the weaker we become. We need to strengthen those muscles by actually doing that work. It definitely brings up some philosophical questions about what makes us human and are we losing our humanity in the process of doing stuff like this. I can see this as being a very loaded topic, though. Feel free to drop your comments below if you have some opinions you wanted to share. Okay, so word on the street is that Google had these two divisions, DeepMind and Brain, and they were not friendly with each other. And of course, we've already covered the panic that Google is in because of ChatGPT, because of just a lot of how the tech space is moving and changing right now. So this merger is definitely something more of a desperate attempt. But hopefully with these two more powerful divisions combined, they can maybe come up with something a little bit better than what Bard has to offer. Bard is making a little progress, but the real question is, is it too little? Is it too late? Because ChatGPT is also making a lot of progress. I wanted to touch on something real quick that I haven't had a chance to try out myself. I saw Opera 1, which honestly, I'm having a little bit of trouble keeping up with Opera and the different versions they have. Now, as you can see here, I got the regular browser, but they also got like a GX version of a browser, which is a gaming version. I have that on a laptop. Now they have Opera 1, which is supposed to be designed for generative AI features. Reading through this article briefly, it looks like it kind of uses your screen in the context of what's there to group things together. Maybe perfect for, I don't know, a video like this. But of course, integrating directly with ChatGPT, AI prompts in general, I think is one of the big focuses here. If I end up downloading it and checking it out, I may even put together a video about it just to give you an idea of what the experience is like. It does seem very appealing. Hopefully you've seen my other videos. Hopefully you're awesome and you're a subscriber to my channel. And if so, this won't come as a surprise, but we're in a war on multiple fronts. And now we've seen AI and what it can do when it goes to war. So Palantir is a company that already sells U.S. surveillance systems. They spy on us. Things like immigration, things like customs. With the new video that this company has dropped, you can see here the article says the very first thing they did was apply it to the modern battlefield. As they describe this video, the military operator asks a chat GPT-style digital assistance for help, and the GPT-style assistant can help with reconnaissance drones and tactical responses, perceived aggression, and yeah. The natural evolution of a lot of our greatest technologies in the United States becomes weaponry and defense. Now, this next topic I'm going to talk about is a little bit politically charged, but I'm not going to talk about that aspect of it. What I do want to talk about is the fact that this is an entire AI-generated video. Now, regardless of your own political affiliation, I would ask you just kind of ignore what's on the screen and just look at how barely you can see this here. I mean, unless you're really looking for it, you can't really tell. Now, aside from that, the image quality in everything here is really well done. I'm not sure if this was done through Stable Diffusion. It looks like mid-journey to me, if I'm going to guess. But again, not so much about the politics of it as just the fact that this is a very real thing. Where it's a combination of AI art, AI video editing, and potentially deepfakes, deepfake images, deepfake voices. Uh, this is the future that we exist in right now. And I think our best defense in a lot of this case is just making sure that we are asking a lot of questions, making sure that we're just not believing too quickly. So I'd say especially when it comes to what you see, maybe even what you hear nowadays, you, you definitely want to follow up and try to verify your sources, I guess. It's getting very hard nowadays to tell what's real and what's not. 
So let me get out of that murky territory and into something a little bit more fun. We're going to talk about GPT being integrated into Skyrim, which is great news because Skyrim, it feels like, runs on every possible device at this point. Just taking a break from the shop and decided to come here to relax for a bit. The Bannered Mare is always a great place to unwind after a long day. The modder here, not only did they integrate ChatGPT, but they also have integrated some context stuff from the game itself. So your NPC characters, they have an idea of where they're at. They give contextual information. And I'm sure a lot of it is irrelevant and crazy and hallucinatory, but probably better than what they would have said otherwise. And when I think about that level of replayability, potentially immersion, things like that, I mean, the future of video games, maybe not necessarily this itself, but the future of other video games is looking really bright to me. Avoid standing still for too long, as this makes you an easier target. Move around and use your footwork to keep your opponent off balance. And who doesn't want a robot dog that can speak back to you, right? So ChatGPT has also been integrated into a robot dog, and we've got that as well. That's a great question. You know, that's a great question. <laughs> we use ChatGPT. I don't know that I'd make fun of the dog. But... And the user can ask natural questions. I was just wondering if I could dictate to it to say something specifically. What is your battery level? Battery level is currently at 53%. So if the idea of a Boston Dynamics robot wasn't scary enough, now it's got a voice and some low-level critical thinking ability and potentially some problem solving. And of course, this is not for mass production. This is a one-time prototype as it stands right now, but I'm sure it's not the last of its kind. We're going to see a lot more projects like this as time goes on, if this week is any indicator. But moving on into the loaded subject of AI music, let's talk about Spotify first. Now, Spotify's CEO is going to be an interesting topic because they have embraced AI technology. They got a little bit of flack for it from certain people. The AI DJ that we've talked about in past videos, it seems like that AI DJ that they integrated has been a little hit and miss. But all in all, it's not as bad as Microsoft's Bing or anything crazy like that. We talked about that song last week, how it blew up the internet and how all of a sudden the Universal Music Group needed to take it down to protect artists. It brings up a ton of questions about ownership. It brings up a ton of questions about intellectual property. Companies like Spotify, platforms, even something like YouTube, it's going to be caught in the middle of DMCA requests that it doesn't quite know how to fulfill. And if we want to make things even more complicated, we've got artists like Grimes who are coming out of the woodwork saying, feel free to use my voice without penalty, guys. Let's say you can use Grimes' voice. You make something successful. She's cool to share 50% of the profits with you. She's looking at it as a partnership offer and basically collaborating with anyone who's able to be profitable. Now, there's other artists who are taking a very different position. John Legend is a good example of someone who recently came out for regulation and said, this needs to be regulated. And a long while back, we actually talked about Holly Herndon, who now almost seems like a trailblazer in the AI music generation world. Uh, her website, holly.plus, is still available for people that want to make AI-generated music kind of at will. And she set the tone for a lot of things about pricing and a lot of things about copyright, or at least tried to before this blew up and became the issue that it is today. But I am very curious to know what your thoughts are on this. AI music is going to be another very loaded topic, just like AI art was for us, for this channel, for everybody in the AI space. You know, what part of music does a person own? Do they own their voice and what their voice sounds like? Do they own their style? Do they own the notes that make up their song? A lot of those things are pattern-based and very mathematical in nature. So there's a lot of questions and not really a lot of clear-cut answers. But to end the topic of music on a little bit of a fun note, I wanted to show you what happened at the Fat Boy Slim concert in the Metaverse. Which, honestly, every time I talk about the metaverse, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that it still exists. But I do want to show you a little bit about what I saw, because this actually looked fun, if I'm being honest. I'm in engaged. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure if that is exactly how many people were in attendance to this concert. Compared to a lot of what I've seen about the metaverse so far, this looked a lot more fun and engaging than anything I'd seen before. Seeing this does not make me want to run out and buy a VR goggle set, don't get me wrong. And the idea that a lot of these people are sitting at home with this heavy headset on their head, it's a little bit goofy. And I, I don't think the technology is really there for this just yet. But maybe one day in the future, who knows, right? A thing that always boggles my mind about this metaverse stuff, though, is since VR is used so heavily in the video game space, like, why does it look like this? You know, why can't it look better? I feel like if it looked less like this, it would have been far more popular than what it is. 
It looks like Meta has also updated avatars with new body shapes, new hair, new clothing. In the example that we were given here, I don't know why, but they all have the weird DreamWorks smirk as well. I don't know if that's an upgrade or if that's just a default look. And while I'm not exactly sure where this lands on the priority list of problems that are facing Meta, I guess this is a step in the right direction. I mean, it feels like just a couple of months ago they'd added legs, so I guess this is a, a good move, right? But in the topic of AI avatars, I do want to talk about TikTok real briefly. They may be adding generative AI avatars soon, which is your face photos and things like that. I think given the AI features integrated already for their filters and things like that, this is almost a very natural progression for them. I mean, essentially right now you can put AI over your video, so why not be able to do it over a picture? And while the future of TikTok in a lot of places is still very uncertain, I guess it's still nice to see that they are still making some additions to it for the people who will have access to it. The subject of GPT is going to be a heavily loaded one this week. We've got a lot to talk about. And actually, the first thing on the agenda is that GPT itself may be trademarked soon. So OpenAI seems to want to own the term GPT. I don't know that I can necessarily blame them. It is definitely symbolic of what they've built, but it's also being used in other people's projects. So while this does make sense, if they get what they're asking for, it will cause some complications for quite a few people. And I will say I'm not really sure how quickly this kind of thing moves or if it'll move at all. So we'll keep an eye on it if this changes. I just wanted to talk about it very briefly. Another thing we're going to talk about very briefly is called Nemo, which is a technology that NVIDIA says they've been working on for quite a few years now. But it's a guardrails type system that they've integrated into their hardware that allows large language models and things like that to output safer text. Having a system like this in place and having developers have access to it means they can control whether or not you get output in certain cases. So in terms of not safe for work output, this gives enterprise developers the ability to kind of turn that off if they want to. Let's say you ask a GPT type system, how do I make this and it's dangerous? It can just say, I don't know, or I'm not going to tell you. That's what Nemo allows. So yeah, it has the potential of making things safer, but it absolutely can just push biases in a different direction as well. So I've got a Robin Hood story for us of a hacker called XTechie. From what we know, a project was developed that allows GPT-4 access for free. Sort of. It basically steals the API key from a company that is paying for it and gives it to someone who is not. So it seems like this project doesn't really hurt OpenAI as much as it attacks their customers. But XTechie is saying that this is just for educational purposes and uh, legal action can happen and I'll have to comply but I'll still try to continue the project through other means, which is just bold, I think. Normally, the whole idea of robbing from the rich and stealing from the poor, I wouldn't have a problem with. And it just doesn't feel like there's people in desperate need of GPT-4 like this. I mean, they're not exactly starving. So I'm not sure exactly how heroic all this is, but it's a fun story. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and move on for now. Now, last couple of weeks, we've talked about what Italy and ChatGPT had to go through. Now, what you may or may not know is that your conversations with ChatGPT, they get used for training future conversations with other people. That is one of the privacy concerns, but now you can turn that off. So you can decline the ability to have ChatGPT train on your data. So with a move like this, we may see some of those tensions ease with countries like Italy or France or just the EU in general, because they seem to be freaking out a little bit more than the states were. You know, just being able to disable chat history and having these things available as options are... They are nice features. You know, just like most websites, most social media websites anyway, you should be able to log into your account and pull your data and request everything just in case you're curious what kind of data has been stored on your account. I want to end today's video with a little bit of hype because I did see something here and this on the horizon may not look like much, but to me, this is one of the only companies that has the tools, the knowledge and the capability of really competing with OpenAI and with ChatGPT. What Hugging Face has that no one else really has is a very unique position within the AI space. They've become one of the de facto services for storing models, for running a lot of these calculations, for really doing a lot of the training and processing and a lot of the behind the scenes work and heavy lifting for tons of different models. And we're not talking about chat models, we're talking about image stuff, we're talking about multimodal models, music stuff, things that have existed for years before we've even heard of it in this space in a lot of cases. Now, I say all that to say they have the potential. They don't have everything they need right now. But there's a good possibility, in my opinion, we're going to see this one take off and grow very, very quickly. The output of what they have right now seems more similar to something like Vicuna or Llama, nothing close to what GPT-4 has. 
But Rome wasn't built in a day, and a lot of these systems, even after training, they need a lot of honing and fine-tuning to become the type of system that GPT-3 even ended up being. So I want to thank you, especially those of you who made it all the way to the end of the video, watched each of the individual stories. I really do appreciate that. It helps the channel a lot, especially recently. You guys have been amazing interacting with the channel, and it's really helping us grow very, very quickly, and I, I couldn't be more appreciative. So keep the questions coming. I'll keep the videos rolling. I'll see you next Friday for another headlines video if I don't see you with something else first. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching.